Hello everyone, my name is Trevor Dre and I'm a third year student at Thompson Rivers University in the Bachelor of Engineering in Software Engineering program. Today I'm going to be presenting Fast Adaptation Nonlinear Observer for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, or SLAM. We will start first by talking about the abbreviations that we'll be using throughout the paper. Next, we will introduce the simultaneous localization and mapping problem. Next, problem formulation. Then, nonlinear observer design for SLAM. Then, results and discussion. And lastly, we will end with concluding remarks. Here's the set of abbreviations that we'll be using throughout the paper. I denotes inertial frame, B denotes body frame, R is the set of all real numbers, R plus here is the set of non-negative real numbers, and we have the set of real numbers with dimensions n by m, we have the Euclidean norm, and we have SO3 and SE3. SO3 is special orthogonal group of order 3, and SE3 is the special Euclidean group of order 3. Simultaneous localization and mapping problem. The SLAM problem can be represented by this figure. The SLAM problem normally concerns a vehicle whose pose, or position and orientation is unknown, traveling within an unknown environment, or an unknown map. The SLAM problem becomes an essential task when the positioning system is unreliable, such as global positioning systems or GPS. We can see the SLAM problem is necessary in various applications. For example, household cleaning devices, security surveillance, mine exploration, pipelines, location of missing terrestrial and underwater vehicles, reef monitoring, and many more. Now let's talk about problem formulation. The true motion kinematics of a rigid body that is moving and rotating in 3D space or we'll call it attitude and position, as well as a group of landmarks distributed in the environment can be represented by equation one, where R represents the rigid body's orientation, P represents the rigid body's position, omega represents the rigid body's angular velocity, V represents the rigid body's translational velocity, PI represents the landmark's position, and VI represents the landmark's velocity. So in reality, the value of R, or rigid body's orientation, P, or rigid body's position, or PI, or landmark's position, are normally unavailable, and they can be obtained by using a set of sensor measurements. Normally, the sensor measurements are corrupted with noise. So our objective is to estimate the R, P, and PI values. Our main objective in this work is to estimate the attitude, and hopefully by the end of the estimation process, we will end with r hat to be very close to the true orientation, r. Similarly, estimation of the rigid body's position, we will want to have it to be as close as possible to the true rigid body's position, and with the estimation of the landmark's position, we'll want it to be as close as possible to the true landmark's position. Equation 2 represents the measurements of the rigid body's angular velocity and the rigid body's translational velocity. Omega m refers to the angular velocity, which is equal to the true value of the angular velocity, plus some uncertainty, b omega, also known as the bias of angular velocity. Vm is equal to the translational velocity plus some uncertainty, or BV. Again, B omega and BV denote unknown bias or uncertainties. 
Let us consider the error in rigid body's orientation and position as well as in the landmarks, represented as R-tilde, P-tilde, and P-I-tilde, where R-tilde represents the rigid body's orientation error, P-tilde represents the rigid body's position error, and P-I-tilde represents the error in the landmark. Also, we define the following error component, E-I which represents the difference between the error in the landmark and the error in the rigid body's position. Nonlinear observer design for SLAM. Consider the following nonlinear observer design. where the value of FCI is obtained by this equation, such that if the error goes to infinity, the trace of REI will go to negative 1, and FCI uh, will increase infinitely. If the error goes to 0, the trace will go to 1, which means FCI will become a constant KP divided by 2. If we start with the following potential function, number 7, we will end with this result, 8, which shows that the closed loop signal is stable and shows asymptotic stability of the potential function. This slide represents the discrete implementation of the nonlinear observer for SLAM. Now let's move on to results and discussion. Consider the following set of data, initialization parameters, and measurement bias. Whereas we said before, omega is the true value of angular velocity of the rigid body, and v is the true value of translational velocity of the rigid body. r0 is the initialization of the attitude of the rigid body, and P of 0 is the initialization of the position of the rigid body. And when we, st and we started with this set of landmarks, P1 to P4, with this set of values. Here is the bias of angular velocity, which is unknown. And here is the bias of translational velocity, which is also unknown. For initial estimates, we started with r hat to equal to i3 and p hat to equal to 0. Now let's go to design parameters. Consider the design parameters as follows. Now let's go to the results. This figure represents localization and mapping of the robot in 3D space, as well as mapping the unknown environment. The black center line represents the true trajectory of the robot, where the black circle represents the final destination of the robot in 3D space. These black circles represent the destination of the landmarks, where the blue color represents the estimation of the robot in 3D space, and the red color represents the estimation of the landmarks of 3D space. Stars refer to the final destination of the estimates. This figure represents error convergence, where we can see that the error started at large values and ended very close to zero, which is our objective. This figure is related to errors E1, E2, E3, and E4. Here is the difference between the landmark true value and the landmark estimate. This figure relates to the first error, second error, third error, and fourth error. In summary, we'd like to conclude that a nonlinear observer for simultaneous localization and mapping is proposed. The proposed observer compensates for unknown bias attached to angular as well as to translational velocities and the numerical results reveal the observer's ability to concurrently map the unknown environment and obtain the vehicle's pose.
Here is a set of references that we used during the presentation. And thank you for listening.